One game down in week five, it was the Atlanta Falcons winning a shootout against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we're making picks for the rest of the week five NFL schedule on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next-level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson, as always, at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We love our everydayers and appreciate all the new listeners jumping in with us this season on Peacock and Williamson every day. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss an episode on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Just visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right. This is kind of a theme of the day. I know you recorded before we're recording right now with uh, Tony Wiggins, uh, the barbershop on Locked On NFL as you do on Fridays, Matt. And your topic of the day, if you guys want to go listen to that episode, a little teaser here, was um, talking about some of the uh, older quarterbacks around the NFL. And it's the one position, position maybe in professional sports, where it pays to be the old guy. And mm-hmm. we just thought Kirk Cousins put up 500 passing yards and four touchdowns on Thursday night football, which goes right along with um, with what your topic of conversation was. And we've got Flacco's back on the field again, and young quarterbacks, some of them looking okay, but most of them having a tough time in the NFL as they get going. So it's like, should we just start not messing with, quarterbacks until they turn 30 and then just go in and try to find a guy that's still talented and, and fix them. If you get, if you have a good coach, I know you're semi joking, but I don't think that's crazy. I mean, as opposed to just going after all the lances and dramatic, uh, Jermichael, Russell. And I mean, I'm just talking about like early picks that have a lot of variance to them. Why not just get the recycled Darnold or even fields, let alone the older dudes, Gino, the guys that played last night, you know, that are excelling in new spots. And I urge everyone to check it out. And we got a lot of games to get to, but I mean, I I think much of it is just, if you're going to play all this zone and take away the big play, the more mature quarterbacks aren't going to rush things and they're just going to dump it down. And okay, you can't go, what is it? Can't go broke taking a profit or, uh, you know, my, my favorite one, and I'll try to clean it up is, you know, there's two bulls at the top of the hill and the son looks up at the father bull and says, let's run down there and kiss one of those cows. <laughs> and, and father bull says, let's walk down and kiss them all. But they don't usually say kiss. <laughs> right, right, yeah. uh, where are you going with that one? Yeah. 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 Uh, I love the, you can't go broke taking a profit, man. And uh, right, that, right. I'm sure that is up there for most offensive coordinators in the NFL. Uh, with one of their favorite quotes. And uh, we saw that with Kirk Cousins early and often. I mean, they came out throwing, and they kept throwing because this was a shootout. And I think they probably realized that that's the way this game would probably go uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. And um, uh, to be honest with you, so one a minute and I think it was a minute 40 seconds, which is, I mean, it's an eternity now in the NFL, but it's like, okay, uh, this game I think is over. It's 30-27, and uh, I had to do some locked-on 49ers stuff. So I, I left the front, I left the TV and and went out to the office to uh, to prepare to do a podcast. And then my co-host, Eric Crocker, is like, hey, we're going on overtime. Peacock is like, gosh, dang it, okay. Uh, that was <laughs> obviously way too much time, especially in a game like this. And then the Falcons were able to go in OT and win it with a huge uh, Kadero Hodge catch and run in this one. Uh, but, you know, everybody eats when your quarterback throws for 500 yards. 58 passing attempts, 42 completions for Kirk Cousins, 509 passing yards, four touchdowns, one interception. Uh, Drake London, 12 for 154 and a touchdown. Darnell Moody went crazy, uh, nine for 105 with two touchdowns. Kadero Hodge had the game winner as well, 45 yarders. So um, it was a shootout, and uh, the Buccaneers obviously put up 30 points, so they did a lot themselves, but not as much as needed. It was the Atlanta Falcons, 36-30. Yep, and all that stuff is very, very relevant, and boy, it's fun to be a Falcons fan right now. It looks like Cousins is you know going to be a really good player for you on a good offense. But the biggest key to me in this game was short week matters, of course. And 
on the road, but you know, it's you, we know that you're behind the eight ball in that regard. But the whole key to me was the Falcons ran 81 plays, which is a ton. Tampa ran 51. You know, and another you know, two a, a lot of offense is bad. Or what is that saying? I mean, I got my bulls and profits all screwed <laughs> up here, up but. <laughs> If you want to play better defense, play less defense. I mean, 81 right. plays is too many. The Falcons score 16 points in fourth quarter and overtime. Was this good offense or bad defense on Thursday? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think these are both legit offenses. And I do think defenses are always behind the eight ball on Thursday night. But I, I'm not super impressed with either defense either. Big comeback win for the Atlanta Falcons to start week five, 36 to 30. And these two teams now tied at three and two. And now Atlanta Falcons have the tiebreaker over the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers for first place in the NFC South. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun with these teams. And I think the Saints yeah. might be in there having a conversation about it. Don't think the Cardinal or the uh, Carolina Panthers will, will be in that conversation this year, although they have looked better with the red rifle at quarterback. Uh, we'll make our picks for uh, for all those games for the rest of week five as well. But uh, Falcons Bucks looks like it's going to be fun here in the South this year. Yep. I understand. Agree. I mean, I throw the saints right in that mix. Um, I, I did a power rank this week and I had the three of them very, very close, probably within five spots, give or take. And I think they're all going to beat up on each other in the South and the South's a lot more interesting than we thought was going into the season. No doubt. All right, let's uh, let's get into the rest of week five and, and make the rest of our picks a reminder of our six pack from Wednesday's episode, it was actually a four pack because we talked a lot about the Devonte Adams trade and potential landing spots there. So go listen to that episode for uh, you know what we uh, thought was going to happen with these uh, games. But I just want to relay it, and you got it right, Matt. You, you you got me on the Atlanta one. I had the Bucks, and I felt pretty good about that until all the way at about uh, well a, a minute left in over, in, in regulation and in overtime. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, the the Atlanta Falcons ended up winning that one for you. They were favored at one and a half at home. I took the Bucks. You took the Falcons. We both agreed on the other three games. You We both took Pittsburgh, giving up two and a half points at home against Dallas. We both took Las Vegas at Denver, getting three points. And we both took the Minnesota Vikings, um, giving up two and a half points at home against the New York Jets. So it was a four-pack today and uh or on wednesday and those were those picks so just a reminder yeah, to yeah. the folks out there who might be tuning in and didn't catch the wednesday episode but go listen to that and hear about all of our conversation about Devontae adams and where he could wind up let's go to the carolina panthers and finish up uh, some of the south here the panthers are at the bears the one three panthers are at the two and two chicago bears chicago favored by four points at home here in week five matt not a huge Bears believer, but I like that they started running the football last week for the first time early all year. I do think some of these rookie quarterbacks, I mean, I know that it's not looking pretty for Knicks, but it's. I would hope the game starts to slow down a little bit for Knicks and Williams in particular. I just think the Bears defense is the best of the four units. Not an easy place to play. I wish this was under three, but I'm still going to take Chicago. I was going to say the exact same thing. I wish it was under three. It'd be an easy pick for me to take the bears yeah. I, I don't like um the the four points here but it's just really hard for me to believe in the panthers even though they've played better on defense and running the ball since um since andy dalton took over at quarterback i mean it's just it's just helped the entire efficiency of the whole football team when you're you know getting first downs and uh and moving the ball down the field a little bit more but uh the bears showed signs of life with the running game which is hugely important I think they can get the Panthers blocked up up front and give Caleb Williams some time. So uh, I am also going to take the Bears at home. Even though I don't like giving up so many points. Yeah, not my favorite game to put a couple ducats on, though. Right. A big one here. Uh, let's go to, actually, should we finish up the, the NFC South? We might as well. Are the Saints, uh, so, oh, Saints are on Monday night. They're Monday night, yep. Yeah, well, let's, let's do it. Let's go to the Saints okay. on Monday night. Let's finish up the NFC South portion of this. And uh, they're taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. The 4-0 Chiefs without Rache Rice. And the Chiefs at home are favored by five and a half against the two and two Saints. Saints D's played well. Chiefs D's played well. I kind of lean towards an under type game. And I think especially on standalone games, the Chief lines get a little overblown. Like, yeah, they're four and oh, but they don't cover as much as you think. Not that I'm a betting expert, but I do think people think they're better than they are and they just blow everybody out. I don't see the Saints getting blown out. I'm taking the points here. <sighs> I don't. I don't want to agree with you too much on this episode, and I think we've sure. had some, uh, uh, some interesting games where 
when we don't agree, it's more fun. And this <laughs> is close enough to where I think you said you're going to take the. I want the points. The point you want the points in the Saints. Okay, I'm going to take the home Super Bowl champion Chiefs then and give up the points because I'm I do think they have a, this game. I think they have a big advantage against the Saints O line though. I and I don't care. We went through this last year, and you know I don't care what the stats look like for Patrick Mahomes. I don't care if he's missing weapons. Um, in some ways, it almost makes him better in, in an odd fashion. And so, yeah, give me, give me the, give me the Chiefs. They can win this one by a touchdown against the Saints because the Saints are, are a team that I think is just going to be so up and down, and, and we've already seen that with them through four weeks. That's a big thing we talked about with Wig. You know, time to worry about the Chiefs. I'm like, I think every team in the in the on the planet will take the problem. I'm putting that in quotes of being four and zero and hoping Mahomes gets better than and, being an average quarterback. You know, and one of the most I difficult. Think it'll be fine. To play to at Kansas City. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think the Chiefs it. will be just fine. I don't think anyone's crying for them for no. And the Chiefs are a team that does really well. Uh, uh, risk, uh, um, uh, defense coordinator. What's his name? Uh, yeah, Spag, 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 Spagnolo. I wanted to call him Rick Scandarello. Um, Spagnolo does a fantastic job against the Shanahan tree offenses too. So. Mm, and he gets extra day to prepare. Yeah. Yep. Give me the Chiefs. All right, next. Uh, really big one here. The Bengals, it feels like every week is a must-win for the Bengals so they don't fall too far behind. They're facing the 2-2 two and two Baltimore Ravens and a whole lot more from week five. We're making our picks next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. And... Price Picks is the place to play DFS because you are not just playing against a whole bunch of other pool of players and potential sharks in the pool. It's just you against the stat projections at Price Picks. And when you sign up today at Price Picks, you can get $50 instantly when you play your first $5. So you don't even need to win on that $5 to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. And Price Picks also offers weekly promotions like Taco Tuesday. And um, Price Picks is the best way to win real money. All season long, because when you know which players are going off or you think you know which players are going off, which ones aren't prize picks uh, makes it so easy in less than 60 seconds. You just pick two or more players. And there's so many options and not just NFL football. But of course, we're all here to talk about NFL football and all season long. You're going to get that action on prize picks and have so much fun doing it. So download the app today and use promo code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly. After you play your first $5 lineup, that's code locked on NFL to get $50 instantly at pricepicks.com. The Cincinnati Bengals, Matt, are hosting the Baltimore Ravens. And, uh, you know, we've, we loved what we saw from the Ravens last week, but, you know, they've kind of stumbled to start the year too. The, the Ravens, don't forget, are two and two. So they have also got to have this one to keep pace in the AFC North. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals at home at one and three. Baltimore on the road, though, is favored by two and a half points at Cincinnati. One of my favorite bets of the week. I like the Ravens laying the points here. Um, I mentioned I did a power rank, and I put the Ravens number one. I don't think there's a clear number one. That's a hard choice right now. But, man, I think their offense is figured out. I think the defensive staff starting to get things where they need to be. And I really dislike the Bengals' run defense. And I think this is a bad, bad matchup for them. And if they're one four, it might be time to start digging a grave for the Cincy Bungles. We we talked about the, the matchup last week, and uh, it was a good matchup for the Ravens. And this is also, yeah. on paper, looking like a lot of the same. And uh, even though I want to take that, you know, that home dog, which I like a lot, the, the Bengals just haven't shown me that they're ready this year. And, no. Uh, and the, the matchup specifically that running game for the Ravens. Um, I, I'm going to give up the points as well and take the, the road Ravens to win this one. And if that's mm -hmm. the case, the Bengals might be in trouble at one and four. Big time. I mean, the AFC doesn't look too terrible, but th this almost pretty close to a must win for Cincinnati. This is a huge swing for both teams. The Ravens can't Dude. fall two and three either. Right, right. I 100% agree. If they're both two and three right. and the Steelers happen to win, it's like, man, they got three game lead. You know, that's, that's, that's a lot. The Miami Dolphins are at the New England Patriots. Both teams struggling right now. The one and three Dolphins at the one and three Patriots. The Pats might be the team that can help the Dolphins get things right without Tua. 
um, specifically because uh, I was blown away. We already knew it was bad. The, the Patriots might have the worst offense in the NFL, and that's with the Dolphins, you know, not having anything that they want at quarterback. And it's mostly because up front, the Patriots can't block anybody. They can't stop not only one-on-one -on -one matchups against defensive linemen, uh, they can't stop stunts. They can't stop blitzes. It's really bad for the Patriots right now. And yeah. that week one win against the Bengals, I think, is a distant past. And obviously, you know, we've seen how the Bengals have played this year, too. So it doesn't even look like that good of a win. Um, and they're favored by one. So I'm going to take the single point and I'm going to take the Miami Dolphins here to look at least a lot better than they have the last couple of weeks without Tua, even though I think they've got some big time problems. Miami was 32nd on my power ranks and New England was 31st. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I think these two teams are dismal right now. Jalen Phillips is out for the year. I mean, I'm just going to take the home team. I, I don't want anything to do with it. It's my least watchable game of the week. And give me the home team. All right. I like this. We're disagreeing. Plus, I wanted to take something different than you. Yeah. Well, we're disagreeing a lot. And so we're <laughs> in week five from our. Picks. And I know some of the listeners out there are, are keeping track, too. So I'll be interested to see how that goes for us this week. Um, we've got the Cleveland Browns at the Washington Commanders. We got red hot against ice cold right now with the Commanders hosting the Browns. And it is Washington favored by three points at home. Seems low. And I'm not 100% dove in the deep end that Washington's going to be this great team. And, you know, they're this year's Texans. But I am dug in the deep end that Cleveland stinks. I think their offense is horrendous. It could be a close game based on the Browns' defense and Washington's lack of defense, but I'm taking the Commanders at home. I bet that's going to be an atmosphere unlike they've seen in maybe a decade in Washington. Like, I bet the optimism, it's going to be fun to be there, you know? There is some C.J. Stroud, Houston Texans vibes going on with the Washington Commanders mm -hmm. right now who are kind of turned this thing around a lot quicker than people expected, and everyone's a believer right now in Jaden Daniels, and it's easy to see why. Um, th this, I would, I really want to take the Browns and take the points on this one, but the Browns defense that I thought would be able to cause some problems for Jaden Daniels and the commander's offense, even though they're flying high and putting up 40 points a game right now, um, the Browns defense hasn't been, that's the thing you could hang your hat on. Even that hasn't really been enough for the Browns this year. And so, um, as much as I want to, I, I just, there, there's no, there's no reason to believe in what the Browns are doing. There's a lot of reasons to believe in what the commanders are doing right now. So I am going to take Washington in this one. I mean, they just pulled it up. I mean, per EPA, the only offense worse than the Browns is Miami. I mean, like, did we really think the Browns and Dolphins would be the two worst offenses in the league at this, at this stage? I mean, no, not at all. <laughs> That's the concerning thing about Miami, because you would have thought they would, you know, even with Skylar Thompson or whoever at quarterback, they would be able to scheme up some things and, you know, get the ball into Hill's well, hands and make some big plays, you know, catch and run for Waddle, the running game. And it all just disappeared. All disappeared. Narrow lines, junk. And, I mean, yeah. That's why I believe in the Dolphins against a bad team. They're, they're, they can't be that bad, no matter who's the quarterback for them. I see what you're saying on that one. Uh, let's go to the Indianapolis Colts, who are at the Jacksonville Jaguars. The 0-4 Jags. Can they win one? They're favored, Matt, at home by three points against the Indianapolis Colts. This is weird. I mean, because I don't know if Richardson's playing. I don't know if Flacco's playing. And frankly, I don't know which one gives them a better chance to win. I lean towards Flacco after really studying that game against Pittsburgh last week. And I think Jacksonville's a disaster. They're 30th in my power rank. I think the Colts are much better than them. But the Colts never, ever, 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 ever win in Jacksonville. And I don't know why. Wig didn't know why. He covers the Jags. And I'm just not going to buck that trend. Give me the Jags. I'm going the other way. Uh, the the Jags They're are better team. awful until I see them play good at all. I can't bet on them. And at least I've seen a little glimpse from the Colts, even though they've been pretty no bad doubt. as well this year. And uh, I, to be honest with you, I think Flacco gives them a better shot to at least keep this close, get within a field goal there, and potentially finally go to Jacksonville and, uh, and win a football game. So give me the Colts in week. Trust me, Pittman and Downs want Flacco to start. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think they're going to have Jonathan Taylor this week either. That's not good. Mm -mm. Next, we've got Bills and Texans, which highlights the rest of the Week 5 schedule. We're making picks on Peacock and Williamson. When you want to make picks for all of the Week 5 games and any week of the NFL season, and by the way, all the lines we're referencing on today's episode come from 
FanDuel and FanDuel.com and a special offer for our listeners when you download the FanDuel app and get started. We're talking about $200 extra to play with, and all you got to do is place your first $5 bet, and it's why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. So uh, get started this season with a big return and that extra $200 in bonus bets. And by the way, when you got a hunch in the middle of a game on Sunday and you want to go check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play and so much more, you can find it all on the very same page where you're placing your bets at FanDuel.com. Dot com. So again, year-long bets. You want to bet on your team to win the Super Bowl, offensive, defensive, rookies of the year. Every sport imaginable, by the way, not just NFL bets, are out there to be made at FanDuel. And you'll get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just download the app or go to FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com. The Buffalo Bills are at the Houston Texans, 3-1 and one at 3-1, and one, a couple of division leaders here, and it's the road Buffalo Bills favored by one at Houston, Matt. I'll take the points in this one, and it's not really of a knock on Houston. It's just I think the betting community might be a little down on Buffalo because I think the Bills played the worst matchup they could ever dream against Baltimore. You know, I mean, just the, the running attack that Baltimore throws at a team that wants to live in nickel and is smaller like Buffalo. Because the opposite is true for the Texans. They can't run the ball at all. And Mixon's out. I think he just got ruled out right before we hit record here. And a big trend with the Texans is can't run, can't run. And they lead the league in penalties. And it's always third and long. And if Stroud wasn't the superstar, if anyone thinks he's going backwards, they're out of their mind. They would be 0-4, 1-3. They would be talking about, man, this team's a dumpster fire. So they've done a lot of self-abuse, to be honest with you, with the penalties and lack of ability to run the ball. I'm going to take the Bills to get this thing right. So it's basically the opposite of what we saw last year matchup or last week matchup wise for the Buffalo Bills. Last That's the way I see it. Yeah. The team that was the best in, in the league at running the ball last week is who the Bills ran into this week. It's, it's a team that can't take advantage of that. And the Bills should be the better team running the ball. And of course, they have their own superstar quarterback on their side as well. So, yeah, I, I like Buffalo in this one as well. Mm-hmm. the Las Vegas Raiders we did yesterday. Yeah. Las Vegas at Denver, which is an ugly game. And oh I yeah. 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 Talk more about that one. How about the Arizona Cardinals that are at the San Francisco 49ers, one of three cards at two and two Niners. Niners got back on track against the uh, New England Patriots last week. The Cardinals, man, the more I watch, look at this Cardinals team, they, have a formidable offense, but their defense yeah. is really bad, Matt. Really and bad. So the Niners are going to put up 30 points. The question is, how many points can the Cardinals put up here? Uh, seven and a half, the 49ers are favored at home. I think this is a lot, and it's maybe a little too much. And I had actually predicted the 49ers to win by seven earlier in the week, and then this thing ticked one more half. So is that enough to have you take the Cardinals? I like the Niners straight up, but I don't know about the points. I'm going to take the Niners. I, I think that the Niners defense is three tiers ahead of the or the Cardinals. Cardinals are right there with Washington and the Rams and Panthers for worst defense in the league. I think the offenses are comparable, but I would probably still give the nod to San Francisco. I'm going to take the Niners and lay the points, but I'm with you that I wish it was a little bit smaller spread here. I'm not real comfortable with the number. I'm going to take the Niners by seven. So I'm going to take them straight up, and I'm actually going to take the Cardinals and seven and a half to at least keep this somewhat close and and score a little bit. And there's one major reason why, and it's because as we sit here Friday, Fred Warner might not play. And so there might be a little bit more business, open for business in the running game and over the middle of the field for the Cardinals uh, in this one. Uh, It looks like McBride is back. Right, yeah. So, you know, Connors, McBride, Marvin Harrison Jr., and obviously, the the probably the 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 best way to kind of run down and corral a scrambling Kyler Murray is Fred Warner. So if he can't play, or if he's not one hundred percent on his ankle, and it, uh, to be honest with you, he's not one hundred percent. I'd rather him sit down in this game. And he hasn't practiced at all this week. Kittle also hasn't practiced this week, by the way. So um, yeah, middle of the field might be open for business for the first time in a while against the San Francisco 49ers for the Cardinals. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take that. Seven and a half points in this one, even though I do think the 49ers can still win because their defense is still better, even without Fred Warner, than the Cardinals. I want the points now. Warner's just too important. (laughs) McBride over the middle. I mean, they'll steam stuff up. If he's not going to play. It would be uh, easier, and I bet the line goes ticks back down 
to, to seven or less if Warner yeah. can't play because it's not official that he won't play yet. And Kyle Shanahan said, you know, Kittle and Warner are two guys that they can still play even if they didn't practice all week, if they improve past Friday to Sunday. Uh, but right now it's not looking good for either one of those players. But Okay. That's enough for me. To, I didn't, didn't love the seven and a half. It was six and a half, like you said, and those two weren't playing. I'd probably take your Niners, but without the two of them or unlikely for the two of them, give me the hook. Give me that Might six, be another shootout like we saw on Thursday Oh, I night. think so, yeah. Let's have fun. I the Green Bay Packers at the Los Angeles Rams, two and two Packers are favored by three points on the road at L.A. Feel very strong about the Packers in this one. I'm losing a lot of faith in the Rams defense, to be honest with you. I think Stafford can only do so much. Love knocks some rust off, and he's got a really good set of weapons, even if Watson doesn't play. I don't think going to L.A. I'm sure there'll be a lot of Packers fans there. You know what I mean? I'm taking the Packers all day here. The The yeah. Rams are one of the worst teams in the league. That one win they got was gifted to them, and they were down multiple scores for most of that game. The The, the Rams really have uh, one good player right now. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. and look, Sean McVay's a good coach, but they've got problems. They can't stop people. And now that Jordan Love has gotten uh, back in the swing of things and, and uh, is in his second game back, uh, I really like the Packers in this one. So I, I think that I like the Packers by a lot here. Yeah, that's one of my favorites of the day. The New York Giants are at the Seattle Seahawks, and the Seahawks are favored by six and a half points at home. I'm not certain that Seattle should be big favorites over anyone, although they're having a very good year, but I'm still going to lay the points. Last I saw, Neighbors is not progressing through uh, concussion protocol very well. I do like that the Giants have a long week to prepare, but the fact that he's still, with that long week, not look like he's going to play I don't know where the offense comes from. Brutal place to play. I'll take Seattle here. Uh, I like Seattle here, even though, I mean, I don't think any teams had a better run of teams, opponents to play against I know, this I know, year I know. than the Seattle Seahawks. So uh, I'm still like, you know, in their most difficult game, they lost against the Lions last week. And so they're three and one, but maybe, I don't want to call them a complete paper tiger right now, but they, they're getting some really good matchups here. So, um, and, you know, they've had some injuries up front. So without knowing exactly who's going to play up front, because th- last week they also didn't have their first round pick in Byron Murphy. Um, they didn't yeah, have their two other, yeah, Moffey. They have their two best defensive linemen aside from their rookies. So their three best yeah. defensive linemen were out. So that makes things very difficult. So if any of those guys come back, obviously that helps. But I don't know if it even matters if those guys are back because I just am not a believer in the Giants. I don't like how many points this is, so I probably wouldn't touch it. Um, but Seattle's a tough place to play. Give them the Seattle Seahawks. They're just a better football team. Yeah. Again, the neighbors are so important, I think, to them. Sunday nighter is the Steelers at Cowboys, which we already addressed. Uh, do you want to change yeah. anything? You got the, the Steelers because I'm kind of uh I'm kind of having I'm second guessing myself. We both took Pittsburgh, giving up the two and a half points at home. And I almost want to take the dog now in the in the Cowboys on the road, even though I haven't loved what I've seen from the two and two Cowboys thus far. Be my guest, but you're gonna regret it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We're confident here. Let's go. Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, I'm, I'm not changing. Cool. I'm not changing. You, you talk me back off the fence, Matt. I like it. <laughs> All right. There's our picks for week five of the NFL schedule. Let us know what you think at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. While you're watching games, if you've got any questions that come for, through your mind for next week's mailbag, hit us there or drop a comment on YouTube. Subscribe while you're there. Matt and I back Monday to break it all down right here. Peacock and Williamson.